Okay, so this is uh, this one. Uh, first question was about read, read Miller codes. We are asked to make list of parameters of uh, read Miller codes. The so first thing is uh, n is 2 par n, which is uh, 64. m would have been a 6. Then k is what? Summation i equals 0 to r. m choose i. In this case is 6 choose i. Then b is. 2 power of minus r and then you just make a table. I think most people have done this table like okay, I mean almost everybody got 5 marks in this question. So, so there's very few cases when I had to give partial credit, almost everybody got most things correct. Okay, so second one was uh, C is uh, BCH code, binary BCH code. When it was 15. And uh, first part asks you to find gender the polynomials for C and it's dual. Okay, so n equals 15 is G of 16, and I like, really expect you to be quite intimately familiar with the minimal polynomials and everything in G of 16. Okay, so don't, uh, I mean, I saw people writing some crazy expressions, but I mean, you should be very comfortable with uh, G of 16. Okay, so G of x will be, so it's, it's two error correcting, right? So t equals 2, so it should be the LCM of. Minimal polynomial of alpha, alpha square, alpha power 3, and alpha power 4. But alpha, alpha square, and alpha power 4 all have a minimal polynomial which is x plus 4 plus x plus 1. We're assuming that's what you put to generate your field. And then for alpha power 3, you will get x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x square plus x plus 1. So if you multiply this out and simplify, you will end up getting 1 plus x power 4 plus x power 6 plus x power 7 plus x power 8. Okay, so the simplification is useful for the remaining questions. For instance, to write down the generator polynomial, generator matrix and all that, this is very useful. If you don't do the simplification, it will be complicated. Okay, and then for the dual, you have to find h of x. h of x will be x power 15 plus 1 by g of x. And that is basically all the other polynomials here. Okay? So that will be x plus 1, x power plus x plus 1 times x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1. Okay. And this is not the generator polynomial of the dual. Generator polynomial of the dual will be x power degree of h of x, which is 7, x of x inverse. Okay. So you can substitute that if you will get this e x plus 1 again, x power plus x plus 1, and this guy will become x power 4 plus x plus 1. Okay. So if you can, you can multiply this out, it's not very hard to do that. You will get 1 plus x plus x power 3 plus x power 7. Okay. And part B, you, you see this multiplication form will help you. Okay, so you simply write G as G of x in the first row. Remember, length should be 15. Okay, so I saw some people had actually filled out all the zeros. You don't have to necessarily do it. You give me the algorithm for generating the parity check. You generate a matrix, I'll accept it. It's not too bad. Okay, so and then you keep on shifting it. X times G of x till you go to the last step. So similarly, H you should do G per x times g per okay so this will be basically how many rows will there be degree is 8 so there will be 7 right 7 rows here you will have 8 okay part c asks you to find the dimension exact minimum distance dimension is basically n minus degree of g of x it is very easy to see it is 15 minus 4 8 to 7 Okay. And when you do the minimum distance, you know, d is given equal to 5 from the dch bound, okay, but what is weight of uh, g of x itself? It's 5, okay. So, I should say here, I should be careful, yes, this key the code word corresponding to g of x as weight 5, okay. So, that means d equals 5, okay. So, I have given a reasonable amount of uh, partial credits, I have some logic for the partial credit also. So totally it's 10. I think some people got varying degrees of partial marks in case you think you didn't get what you deserved, uh, come and talk to me. I, I have a pattern which I followed, I don't want to describe it for you. But, uh, or I can describe it in case you have any questions about partial credit. Okay, so third question, I think enough people didn't do this well. I think they didn't expect a read Salman decoding kind of question. But uh, there is a smart way to do it. I was hoping somebody will find the smart way and only found that smart way. But anyway, doesn't matter. Some people found the difficult way, way to enter the answer, but that's fine. I mean, you can get the answer in many ways. In fact, my partial credits is based on the standard P 
teaches that kind of decoding. It's not based on any smart method. Okay. First is GFX for uh, remember sitting here at the end, P equals 2, uh, RS over N equals 7, RS over GF8. Okay, so first thing you should do is write down tables for GF8 and all that, all that is very quick to do and when I did that right here on this side, and see it didn't take too long, I wrote down the table, uh, table on that side and then I wrote RFX and found S1, S2, S3, S4, then wrote down sigma of x and wrote SFX then sigma of x equal to degree 3, degree 4 to 0, solved for sigma 1, sigma 2 and then found the two zeros, in fact the two zeros are just 1 and alpha, so you just substitute, you will see quickly you will find the two zeros, okay. After you find the two zeros, you find the error locators and then equate S1, S2 and get the error magnitudes and you flip it, you get it. This is quite simple, that method is very straightforward, okay. GFX is basically X plus alpha, so you take alpha belonging to GF8 primitive. So in most cases, it is very obvious what alpha is when you write down, but I would suggest that you mention these kind of things, okay. So don't just generally write X plus alpha and expect me to interpolate and know that alpha is a primitive element of GF8. I know that is true, but still it is good to write it or at least write a table so that I know what you are dealing with, okay. So, it is not correct to firstly simply write alpha without any equal. This is the standard matrix, it is quite standard, there is no need to simplify it, but you find if you like. And then you are asked to decode r of x is alpha plus x plus x bar plus x bar 3 plus x bar 4 plus x bar 5 plus x bar alpha x bar 6, okay. So, if you notice very carefully, see one thing which is always a code word most of the time is basically the all ones vector, okay. For many reach element DCH codes, all ones vector will be a code word, okay. Why will that, why is that true? Because you see x bar n plus 1 will be x plus 1 times x plus alpha until x plus alpha power n minus 1, right. Right? And the g of x will always be something here, right. So, there will be the remaining stuff which you take together and multiply with g of x, okay. Except for this, you should not take this. You take the remaining guys here and multiply them with g of x, you will definitely get the all ones code word. So, all ones vector is a very high likelihood to be a code word in your code for BCH read solver. So, why is that useful here? So, if you look at the all ones, that is a very good guess as the transmitted code word because it is close enough to this. You see a lot of ones and then only two things are changing, okay. Now, you see t is equal to 2, which means minimum distance is at least 5, right, exactly equal to 5, okay. So, clearly this k cannot be closer to any other code word other than all ones because it is a distance 2 away from the all ones code word, okay. So, that is the idea here. So, if you think of this as r, having distance between r and 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 equals 2, okay, right, in the first place it is alpha, last place it is alpha, okay, and that 2 is, then it is equal to t, right, and it is less than or equal to d by 2, okay, so it is strictly less than d by 2, okay, that implies there can be no other code word which is closer than this all one, all one, so you can definitely say the maximum likelihood decoding is all ones. Okay, so this is a quick way of getting to the answer, but even if you do it, it is not a lot of work, you can quickly do it. It is, uh, I think it is, if you spent a lot of time in the read more code, for instance, and you spent even more time in the BCH code, you will not have time for this, but if you did those things very fast, I think those things are quite automatic. If you did those things very fast, you will have enough time to compute the syndrome and make sure your errors are not there, you make one or two errors, definitely you can go back and fix it, all those you can do. But even if you didn't have time, if you knew that the all ones code word is going to be there, you can quickly guess the answer. Okay, that's, uh, that's one way. So this is a quick guess. Okay, if you do it the PGZ way, you will get the buffer syndrome of the alpha plus five. The second syndrome of one. I think a lot of people made mistakes here. I think the best way to evaluate these kind of syndromes is just write it down, have the table there, and then write each term and then cancel. Don't don't cancel in your head because there are too many terms which are which will cancel. Okay, don't cancel in your head. Write every term and then cancel at the end. That's much better. Okay, so S3 is alpha, S4 will go for alpha plus 4. And then, uh, so you start in PGZ with two errors, right? So two errors, then the sigma of x is 1p, 1 plus sigma 1x plus sigma 2 x bar. And then when you write down equations, you know, so, so I mean, I don't try to remember the matrix equation. Some people remember that. But you don't have to necessarily do that. So remember what happens. Sfx times sigma of x 
should have no coefficients, no no term x bar t plus one, x bar mu plus one number of variables we are guessing. So x bar three, x bar four must not be there in s of x times sigma of x. Okay, so if you write s of x times sigma of x, you get alpha bar of x plus x bar plus alpha x bar three plus alpha plus alpha bar four x bar four times one plus sigma one x plus sigma two x bar. Okay, what is the coefficient of x bar three? It's very easy to see that. So it's going to be alpha plus sigma one plus Alpha plus five sigma two plus three equal to zero. What's the coefficient of x plus four? Alpha plus four plus alpha sigma one plus sigma two equals zero. These are the two equations. Okay, so you have to see if it's solvable. Okay, if these two are not solvable, then your guess was wrong. You have to go down to one level. Okay, but here it's clearly solvable. I mean, you can quickly see that the determinant here is non-zero. So it is solvable. So you solve for it. So you solve for it. It is very easy to solve for it. You get sigma one equals alpha square, sigma two equals alpha plus six. Okay. So you don't have to remember the matrix. In small cases, it is very easy. I mean, it is not it is not very hard to come up with this. So the sigma of x is actually one plus alpha square x plus alpha plus six x square. So you start guessing zero. Okay. So here this part something is really cannot avoid it. But luckily, interestingly, the zeros are one and alpha. Okay, you can quickly guess. The first thing you are going to guess is one. You see, one plus alpha square plus alpha plus six is zero. The next thing you are going to guess is alpha, and you we'll see one plus that also is alpha. So one and alpha is zero. So here there is one more trick. You should be careful here. This is not the error locator. What is the error locator? It's one for the first one, but what's the second error locator? Alpha by minus one, which will be alpha plus six. Okay. So you know the first and last are an error. Okay. That can immediately give you a hint test to the all ones problem. If you are aware of the possibility, you don't have to really evaluate the error magnitude. You know, immediately the first and last are an error. All ones is a problem. You can quickly get to the answer. So if you like, but if you want to evaluate it, you have to write down the two equations. So if you do look at S one, S one is alpha plus five. Alpha plus five is so e zero plus e six uh, x two plus six. Right? So alpha plus six. So remember, if you have this, e of x is of the form some e zero plus E six x power six, right? So you just put x equals alpha here. You will get the first syndrome. Okay, and then the second syndrome you will put x equals alpha squared. So that will be E six times alpha plus five. Okay, you solve for these two, you will get E zero equals alpha plus three, and E six equals alpha plus three. Okay, and then you put it back in. You add up, you will get the answer. Okay, alpha plus alpha plus three will be one. Okay, so that's how that's our uh, minimal polynomial. So you see the other magnitude. Okay, so it's quick to do. So don't think of uh, Reed Solomon as very laborious. I think you, you look at the question and think, ah, it's painful. Then you can't quickly get to it. It's just nothing, nothing in it. You know, I mean, it's just some. Well, what is a big deal in these equations? It's not a very major set of equations. Just simple substitution. G of eight is such a small field. Very easy to do. Okay, you don't need any major uh, calculation. Okay, that's it. I've given partial marks once again. I have, a, I have a split here. I'm not going to describe that to you, but in case you feel you didn't get enough, come and talk to me. I can explain what I did. So that's it as far as the quiz is concerned.